everyone. Welcome to the training, learning, and development community. Thanks for coming in this morning. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Nice to see you. And Vanessa, um, we'll let that invitation get out and folks will start to roll in right now. Just want to thank you for taking your time out this morning to drop into this community discussion. Um, I'm excited about talking about uh, our topic today because it's been a crazy couple of weeks. Yeah, guitar-tastic indeed. Um, I have a lot of guitars behind me. Um, so welcome. Let's see, we have some people slowly starting to roll in. Um, Susan, welcome. Nice to see you again. Deborah, thanks for coming in. Um, yeah, so what is it that they've been saying about the last two weeks? It's sort of been like the longest year ever or something. And, um, and I, you know... <clears throat> you know, kind of being the person that is sort of running the training, learning and development community, I have been trying to be as, um, as sensitive as possible to like, to everything that hit, you know, so all the content that is coming out of here, I, I want to make sure, oops, I'm going to just turn my notifications off here real quick, because that is going to just start going. Um, I want to just be sensitive to everything that anything that I'm creating or any of the content that is coming out of TLDC um, because I feel like uh, there's sort of, I've just been seeing a lot of kind of tone deaf or what I feel are kind of like tone deaf sort of um, reactions to everything that's going on because it's, it's hard for me on a daily basis to even, um, you know, to just sort of, I mean, nobody is functioning normally anymore. And so um I'm trying to just be sensitive to like how I'm, I might be impacting others. And so, um, so I've kind of been doing things a little different. I've been definitely isolating. I'm, you know, here at home with my wife and son and, you know, we're just, we've kind of been sequestered in our little, um, in our space for, for the last couple of weeks, but I wanted to find out how everybody else was doing. And so I thought, I'm just going to build this community discussion. I have other, other playlists that are coming up. I've been reaching out to others, um, to other speakers and presenters to come on to continue, you know, doing monthly playlists. Um, it's been slow, um, of course, because so many things are going on. And so, um, you know, I'm a little delayed as far as getting the, uh, the April stuff together, but it, but it's happening and I'm just going to continue doing things the way that I can, but I want to check in with everybody. And, um, you know, and I've kind of been dropping off of social media just out of, um, sheer sort of need for like making sure that I have some mental health space, but I wanted to see if we can get some folks in and I, what the way this is going to work today. And we've done this before is I have 17 questions that are um, listed on the bottom. If you look in the ask a question section at the bottom of your screen. And what I want to do is I want to ask those questions and sort of read off what you guys' responses are um, just because, you know, the crowdcast is a great, kind of platform to be able to share. And of course, as many of you know, I output or export all of this and then post it in, in, in podcast format for people to enjoy. And I'd like to just sort of like let everybody in on how your lives are. Um, uh, and, and hopefully that's okay with you guys. Uh, I'm just going to get into it. Um, and I'm just going to share really quick what the last two weeks have been like for me, because it's been particularly crazy. So the first week when we got the work from home order, I was actually, actually, I had started working from home already because I'd had a cold back then. And they said, look, if you're feeling sick at all, don't come in. So I had a cold and then we got the work from home order order. And it's like, wow, this is crazy. And so started working from home. It was kind of um, fun in a way. Initially, it's like, this is going to be like this for a while. But then the following week, um, 75 people from my work got laid off and including um, two people that I directly reported to, which was absolutely insane. And, um, and it was a huge change. And I, I um, and most of the folks that I, in my department um, that I sat with, and I sat with a lot of designers um, and of course, just uh, kind of engineers and, and, and um, operations folks, they're all gone. And so I have, I'm like part of a skeleton team, skeleton team now i think i'm kind of lucky because i have a really wide sort of skill set and so i didn't get the cut but um 
it's very, very strange. And I'm still, you know, I'm just reeling. And so you, if you looked at the newsletter, you saw that I was, uh, I have a website, a new update to the website that I've been trying to get going, but I just haven't been able to get to it <clears throat> because work has been so crazy. The world has been so crazy. And so that's kind of like where I'm coming from with the last two weeks of my life. And so I want to check in with you guys. And if you could just take a look at those questions and I'm going to start going through vote the ones up that you might be interested in, um, you know, hearing the answers for the most. And then also open invitation for anybody that wants to jump on. If you want to come on and share the screen with me, I would love it because it is lonely up here. And um, yeah, and I'm going to read some of the some of the comments now. Joe is posting, you know, that a lot of the conversations are marketing around um, COVID-19 are a little crass. And I agree. It's, you know, um, uh, I think this is a really bad time to kind of be tone deaf. I think that, you know, and then I heard the other day somebody um, make this uh, comment about being a coronapreneur, which is apparently they're going to be uh, <laughs> uh, building a business around all of this stuff. And um, that just felt a little too early to be like jumping into something like that. Um, yeah. And Joe saying uh, uh, lots of people in similar situations or on furlough here in the UK, that can mean cutting wages and hours or almost putting people on hold. And so, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough out there. So anybody, if you're interested in popping in, let me know, just um, type it in chat and I'll send you an invite. And um, just another good morning to folks. Rick, thanks for coming in. Cheryl, great to see you. Um, Thomas, TS, Harold, thanks for coming in. Shanna, Todd, thanks for being here. Um, I am going to go ahead and start with, um, with the questions now. So first question, we've got like three votes. Are you now using video calls um, to communicate? Zoom, Hangouts, et cetera. So I'd love to hear what you guys, you know, if you had a different sort of method, if you weren't a remote worker or work from home type of person and you weren't using Zoom or Hangouts or anything else like that before, are you using that now? Um, Vanessa is saying that they're using WebEx and Zoom. Susan um, had a virtual happy hour with friends via Zoom on Friday night. And isn't that fun? And isn't that such a huge change in our lives? Um, that's something that um, my my friends, we just started doing. In fact, we just did one last night. We actually shared a meal together because we had a friend's birthday. And um and <clears throat> and so we all had dinner together, which was um it was it was nice. It was kind of sad, uh, uh, you know, but it was it was nice. Um I'd say I'm gonna read some more uh okay, so Joe is posting a link about um have you heard of Zoom bombing? He just I had this just happen today and how to avoid it. Okay. So that is going to be a great, uh, a great, uh, um, a great article to take a look at. Cause I hadn't heard about that. Cheryl is saying you, yes, zoom for all had a staff meeting on zoom with 65 people overwhelming, but nice to see people's faces. And that kind of reminds me, my son is six and he's in kindergarten. And just yesterday he started school back again, but every weekday morning at 10 AM, um, his kindergarten class is meeting in zoom. And um, I didn't get to see it yesterday because I was in a work meeting, but I, that, that's something I want to see. Um, um, let's see. And Cheryl's saying our tech department made changes to our Zoom accounts to prevent the bombing. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at that. I hadn't hadn't even realized that uh, that was something like that was even possible. And I'm wondering, like, what how has that changed kind of? Has it been difficult for you? I know for Joe, she's like a pro with all of this stuff. So, so being um, in a virtual environment is, you know, is second nature to her. But, you know, I I do know that there are some folks that are having a lot of difficulty with it, and it's you know the technology gets in the way. I'd love to hear if you have any comments about that. Um, Vanessa is saying, I feel like the field of instructional design has been changing for a while. I'm not an education technologist, e-learning developer, LMS admin, but I do everything. This is not what I wanted to do when I started instructional design. Yeah, isn't, isn't that interesting? That is a great comment. And that is something that I think is probably fairly, well, maybe not common, but I, I, I have heard that from, from people. Um, 
<clears throat> Todd is saying they're doing a lot more delivery of seminars and coachings virtu um, virtually. And Susan is saying my introverted soul loves working from home. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm the same. Although I do miss going in and seeing my coworkers, um, you know, um, face to face. Uh, I am the same. I, I don't mind at all. Kind of, well, I have a lot to distract me in here. I have to be very, have a lot of self-control not to be picking up a guitar every 15 minutes, but you know, that's, I'm the same way. Um, and Joe posted a blog post about, um, people struggling with being live online. Um, check that out if you'd like. Um, let me move on to the next question. So we've got a vote up for this one. Um, so what, can you describe your current emotional state? And I'm really interested in this because, you know, just here we are, just all of this change is happening and we don't have anybody other than maybe our, you know, significant others or just people directly, you know, that, that we're really close to, to kind of talk about things. But even as a, uh, um, a peer group in a professional peer group, like, your emotional state affects you and what you do as a trainer or an instructional designer or, um, you know, what el whatever else you're doing in L and D your emotional state is going to affect that. So how are you guys feeling about what's going on? And Vanessa is saying tired, but hopeful relieved to be employed. Oh, I hear that. Um, Susan on a media break, I find myself getting pretty depressed by all of the news and you know, that is such an important thing to be on that media break, right? You know, to, to take media fasts is something that I've been hearing a lot from folks. And um, it's sort of one of the reasons why I'm kind of really, you know, trying to minimize how much I get on social media. Um, oh, and let's, this is an interesting comment that Vanessa is saying, I only read the first sentence, of course, but she wants to share how, how impressed she is by how creative businesses have become to stay alive. Uh, my favorite chocolate shop is doing virtual tasting sessions and the Coolidge Corner movie theaters having virtual movie seminar, seminars. That is something I would love to talk about. You know, that's a, like a whole separate thing. But I do think that there are um, some interesting things happening in the world um, when it comes to just sort of how people are having to innovate. Um, oh, TS is saying, um, you talked about a deeper need for compassion and empathy now in today's LinkedIn post. Thanks for posting that, um, Thomas. That's, that's great. Um, and I think it's, it's super important, especially as folks that, you know, are, are your primary objective is to, you know, is to work with other human beings. Um, having these things in top of mind is, is, is just so important. Um, Deborah saying, I limit myself to news twice a day. I was already on social, uh, uh, on a social media break through Easter. Yeah. And, you know, I think your mental state is just can be so much better for it. There was a particular day where I was, oh, where I just, I just didn't have time to check in at all on any news on anything, social media or whatever. And at the end of the day, my wife and I, we were both so busy at the end of the day, we both kind of looked at each other. It's like, this wasn't so bad. And it's because we got away from everything. And that's sort of a challenge for me as, um, as somebody who's running um, TLDC, because I want to make sure that I'm, I don't want to push out stuff that, you know, I want it to be valuable to folks. I don't want it to be um, something that, um, you know, makes people tired or whatever. So, um, but uh, yeah, I get it. And there's just so much out there now. Um, oh, Vanessa's posting their news outlets focusing on good news only. Um, John Krasinski started collecting good news and sharing them. I think I saw, I saw something about that. Um, yeah. And there's a link on Facebook. Thanks for posting that, Vanessa. Um, and Deborah says, I limit myself to news twice a day. I was already on. Okay. We read that one already. Sorry. Um, okay. Let me move on to the next one. So next question, has your job as a trainer become more difficult, easier, or it has stayed the same? And Vanessa is saying it's more difficult, more need for training and documentation. Oh man, I would love to hear more about this from you guys. Rick's saying about the same as nearly everything I do is for an online LMS. See, I, you know, and I, I was wondering about that. So what else, what do you guys think? How has your, what, what has the job become more difficult? Do you think it's going to become more difficult as, you know, as, as the dust settles and we're sort of 
moving into this new normal for a while. Um, I would love to hear it. <clears throat> My job and I mostly do, I do a lot of production work, um, you know, in operations and, uh, it's become more difficult because of the layoffs and we just don't know from day to day, like what we're going to be doing. You know, we're, we were always responsible for a certain chunk of things. And now um, a big part of that has been kind of, um, you know, has, has, has been tossed aside. So now we're kind of like, okay, so what do we do today? And, um, and so it's been, it's been different for me. Um, Let's see. Vanessa's saying anyone involved with, with technology or media has become more popular. I feel like a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> Susan bandwidth has created some issues for our LMS, which means complaints that WBTs aren't working. Yeah. And I'm sure that's keeping you busy. And Todd's saying, we'll be interested to see if this is the new normal or whether we would be back to doing a lot of face-to-face -face work in six months. I'm interested in that. I mean, this week, um, this week was a conference week for a lot of folks. The e-learning guild was doing um, the learning solutions conference. And from what I was told, it was the biggest event of uh, the biggest, most registered for um, learning solutions event that they've had and, or yeah, on record. And so um, this was a big, uh, a, 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 a really large disruption for them. Um, but, you know, where I work at O'Reilly media, with the layoffs with, um, you know, 75 people getting laid off, what they did was they shut the entire um, conference side of things down and, um, and laid off all the conference staff. And that was 75 people plus, you know, people that were sort of um, somewhat related to it. And so that was, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, like, do they not think conferences are ever going to come back? I don't know. Um, there are people that are much smarter than me that uh, analyze this stuff, of course. Um, Thomas is saying, I think it would be harder for me personally, but my team and I have pivoted to focused content on well-being for our employee base. I love that, TS. That you know, that's that's kind of the direction I feel like I want to go. Is I want to focus on on more well-being um, because there's just so much everything else out there, and um, and I'm worried about people. Um, okay. And let's see, uh, Cheryl saying we support our online onboarding trainings with face-to-face -face learning, which had to be canceled. Not sure if we will schedule, we will reschedule or just invite folks to next fall's offerings. Yeah. I think that a lot of that is happening. Um, yeah. And Tia is saying he's, he's also worried about folks. Yeah. And, um, and I think by, you know, sort of nature, a lot of us that are in this space are just we have a level of empathy that isn't typical and um you know and so i think it's kind of natural for us to 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 worry about about people um so next question has the way you form relationships with your learners changed for example if they're all working from home now is how you inter interact with them changing and this question is kind of about basically relationships like what you were doing before, you know, like, um, you know, even whatever it was like creating training materials or how, if you did face-to-face -face training, like, I just, I'm interested in kind of the impact and how you're having to reassess how you relate to, um, to, to your learners. And so Vanessa says um, she meets virtually now when that was unusual before. Yes. Yeah, so there's a whole different type of, of relationship you have to form. Um, and Rick is saying, no, my interaction with learners has always been online. And so that's, that's also very fascinating to me um, because you could probably teach other people, like, like what are some of the best practices that you have for, you know, maintaining these relationships and keeping them, um, keeping them active and keeping them engaged. Um, let me see, let me read off some stuff from, from chat here. Um, Die Hard Learning is in, and let's see, I'm currently working on remote onboarding training is in now training people how to log into company virtual systems where typically their manager would have guided them. Wow, that's, that's some work, right? Um, and Todd saying a really basic thing we found in delivering a lot of online seminar programs, um, having the camera on makes a huge difference. 
Yeah. And I've read that uh, uh, in a few places. Um, and of course, I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I've been bombarded about, you know, work from home, best practices and, um, you know, being productive, productive when you're working from home, just um, every, you know, article that it seems like I get in my inbox is that, but um it's totally true. Uh, in fact, when we started this at my work, that was <laughs> we we had regular video calls. We had like part of the you know the staff already worked from home, um, but they never turned on their camera. And then there was an order that we had to turn on um, cameras. And I don't mind because you know I you know I've been doing TLDC for a while, and so I kind of I'm fairly comfortable in this environment anyway. Even though sometimes I think that uh, the guitars are a little much. But uh, I totally agree. Having the, the camera on is important. Um, let's see. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Guitars make it personal. And um, yeah, and I've been, you know, I can't help but sort of geek out and think about changing my background and doing all this stuff. Um, but, you know, it's kind of neat. And I have a really long sort of office. It's kind of not a huge space, but uh, but it's mine. <laughs> Um, Cheryl saying um, to Todd um, gives me an idea to offer Zoom meeting for our new for our new staff to meet me since we can't gather in person. Yeah, and um, TS is saying I'm trying something different with a handful of employees on the well being side of things. I've invited them to join me on the Marco Polo app for asynchronous video chatting, and occasionally I throw in a plug for the learning content in our LMS. Clever. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's kind of like marketing sort of lead magnet stuff. Um, and Rick is saying like some talk show hosts dress from the waist up. I was just reading about how I guess Walmart and Target like for some reason, um, no one is buying like pants or you know or stuff that like waist down that that people wear. Everything that is being sold now is from the waist up, and um you know, and like, uh, what is it? Lululemon and Nike, all their kind of athleisure types of things are just going, you know, are selling like crazy. And, you know, that's kind of nice. All right. Next question. So let's, let's hear this one. Have you Im implemented, have you implemented any new digital tools in the last two weeks? And, um, and Vanessa is immediately answered zoom. And Rick is saying, not really, um, just using what we have way more often and learning them better. And that's a great thing, too. Um, I'd love to hear it. What do you guys, um, uh, any new digital tools in the last two weeks that you haven't used before? Um, Todd is saying, a lot of virtual tools like Zoom um, now allow virtual background images. You can be on the beach from your home office. Yes, those backgrounds are fun. Um, I'm having fun with that with our friends. Um, Joe is saying, I've started playing new online games with family, not the same as tools. Um, Trish, Trish, hey, Trish, going to try Marco Polo. Hey, Joe, um, post some of those online games because I think that that's helpful and that can potentially be helpful with teams too. Um, would love to hear more about that. So if you guys are using, if, if you're implementing any new tools, I mean, Zoom is kind of, it's just everywhere. Um, you, you know, it's even weird like how, my son, my six-year-old is just like, can we zoom? I want to zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, it's just sort of bizarre. Uh, but if there are any other tools that you guys are using, would love to hear it. I have always, you know, my team has always used Hangouts. I'm just so much more comfortable with that. But um, Zoom has always just been an incredible tool. And, um, and it's been around for a while. Um, let's see. TS is saying, um, yes, we launched a new LMS last month, so that's new, but I just enabled the wall in the LMS as a virtual digital social gathering place. That is great. I would love to hear more about that. See, and, and you know, I can see how, you know, TS just having read a lot of your, your, your LinkedIn posts and just sort of like, you know, you being, you've been a guest on TLDcast in the past, you're definitely focused on, on building community and how you're doing. So that, that's, it's interesting. Interesting. Um, all right. So let's go. We got a few more questions here. Um, okay. This one, have you recently started using Microsoft Teams or Slack for communication? Um, and that question is mostly for folks that didn't use it before and are using it now. 
Um, Vanessa says she's in four Slack groups, one MS Teams and one WebEx Teams. Wow, that's a lot. Is that a lot? If you're still in Vanessa, is that is that is that too much? And what's what's your email inbox like? Is it just empty all the time? I'm just truly curious. Um, Susan, our company recently rolled out MS Teams. We're all getting a crash course on how to use it effectively. I'd love to hear more about that too, Susan, because um, yeah, getting thrown into that just really, really quickly. It must be kind of fun at the same time, but also a little overwhelming, I would expect. Um, Rick is saying we have Slack, Zoom, MS Teams, using it all more frequently um, and has become very aware of the constraints of MS Teams. Would love to hear the constraints. If you've got any, if you want to post those, I'd love to hear them. Um, let me get back to chat here. Uh, let's see. Diehard Learning is saying, I recently started recording explainers using PowerPoint just before all this kicked off. And thankfully, it's something that's leveraging quickly and efficiently using the output in combination with BrainShark um, to provide materials alongside the video. That is great. I'm going to reach out to you, Diehard, and um, I want to see if you can come on and maybe we can um, do a demo for that because that sounds really, really interesting. Um, Toddy, good morning. Welcome. Um, she's saying that she's struggling with having gone from Teams group that used video to one that does not use video. I prefer the virtual room full of people with expressions. Teams is really powerful if used right. And I haven't used Teams. Um, I might just create one just to, to get a feel for it, but um, it sounds interesting. Um, and Joe's got a Teams thread on her community, so feel free to click on that if you want to if you want to um, get information ab about um, how Joe's using it. Um, let's see, and chat is just jumping around here. Um, Todd says, "Well, yep, we use Teams. Some love it. Some think it's yet another inbox to keep up with." And Vanessa saying, "It's overwhelming to deal with the Slack groups, but I'm doing it. I'm doing okay. People share very helpful information. Emails are not too bad." Right. And Susan, in a company as large as our team, as, as ours, Teams is pretty crazy. I think I'm a member of eight different teams and only interact in two or three of them. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> I know that in Slack groups, I, we have so many channels at my work. And, you know, I've had to just sort of there's a way that you can you can still be a part of a channel, but um, but kind of mute it. And that's what I have ended up doing, because there really is only maybe two channels that um that stay pretty active in my day-to-day -day. and then a lot of direct messaging i'm always um messaging my teammates directly um let's see uh oh and then todd is saying i do love the channels i do love the channels and teams it can really cut down an email volley yes and rick's saying ms teams only allows four video feeds on screen at a time limiting when you have 12 folks online yeah. And um, Susan's saying, Rick, at our company, Teams is recommended for under 10 people for chat Teams meetings. We use WebEx, WebEx for over 10. And TS is saying, we are approaching burnout with so many options for employees to use communi communication um, or for communicating. Internet, email, LMS, Zoom, video, Zoom chat, text, face. Yeah. <laughs> that, and I think that that can definitely be a problem. And um, would love to hear how you <laughs> resolve that. There are so many. There are so many options. Um, yeah, and 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 I think that because I, you know, I've been lucky because I work for a company that um, that is focused on a lot of technical content, and so a lot of I work with a lot of programmers and engineers, and so they're really meticulous about and streamlined about efficiency, and so we have some great sort of. Um, best practices about keeping kind of tools limited. Um, but in other situations, I can see how everyone wants to kind of just throw in something and then it just becomes this huge um, kind of mess, I guess. Um, Rick is saying um, MS Teams was supposed to replace Zoom, but I think it has reinforced what we like about Zoom. And good morning, Dan. Thanks for coming in. Um, Trish is saying can make it hard to find info um, where we're talking about that. And that happens. Yeah. I get, we try to push everything. Like if we want something officially sort of recognized, we, um, we ask people to, to post it and to send an email. So we have it in our inbox. Um, when it's in our Slack group, it's not as official. 
you know, um, if you need something done right away, you know, send it over, but, um, but also copy it into a, an email request. And that makes it, um, that helps, that helps with, with us documenting stuff as well. Um, so let's move on to the next question. Okay. This one's voted up. So do you feel, do you feel like after the pandemic recovery, the workplace will return to what it used to be? And, you know, I, I just wanted to know how you guys felt about it. Um, I've, I've actually had some folks thinking that say to me that they just thought that after this was all done, everything's just going to completely go back to normal. I know that for me, just because of the changes I'd had to have to go through with the layoffs and everything, it's absolutely not going to be normal the way that our teams are going to be distributed and how they're going to be interacting with one another. Um, but Vanessa says, not quite. If something worked well online, they will transition it permanently. And I agree. Um, Rick says, not completely. I think we will be more open to tele telecommuting um, depending on the task. I can be much more focused and productive working at home. That's great. Um, yeah. And Dan, Dan agrees. What do you guys think? I mean, after this is all done, this is a major change. Um, you know, I was thinking about how, you know, the, the video communication, being able to talk to other people using, you know, our smartphones or, or computers. And it always felt like a, you know, oh, in 20 years, maybe this will become the normal, but, you know, FaceTiming or whatever isn't quite normal yet, but this is accelerating that. Like, so it feels like it's going to be become sort of more commonplace. And even with my son, he has, um, you know, even though he's only six, he has his best buddy who he went to preschool with. They have, I mean, every day they want to, um, they do a video call with each other and um, they just, he just runs around the house with his mom's phone and they, you know, he goes and hides under a table and, you know, shows his Pokemon cards to his friend. And so he's going to, he's, he's going to get, you know, this is becoming his normal. So it, I, I feel like this, you know, this situation is, is, cre is accelerating the adoption of certain technologies. Um, let's see, I'm going to go back and, and read some of the stuff here. Toddy's saying, um, I hope that employers will realize that our work ethic is strong no matter um, where or how we work. I totally agree. And Trish, a new normal, we will adjust. Um, TS is saying, not sure for my org, my C-suite before all this happened, we're not big proponents of um, working from home. And um, yeah, Rick's saying the modern version of a pen pal. I, I guess, yeah. Um, Die Hard Learning saying, I hope not in one way. I think it emphasizes that a lot of work can be done online. I think those who always prefer the classroom may even learn to embrace the online classroom as well. I'm enjoying my stake in this as I get to map out somewhat uncharted solutions and territories. And I have a question that's kind of related to that um, later on, because I think that is such a huge piece of all of this is that there is, you know, we are just totally in uncharted territory. Um, Cheryl is saying, I have always had the option to work from home, but I prefer the office. I like to make a clear and concrete um, difference between work and home. Yeah. And I have another question about that as well. Um, Vanessa saying, my work life is online learning and I much rather learn in person. Mm -hmm. um, and Joe agrees with Cheryl. Um, yeah. We'll see, <laughs> I guess, how. Um, hopefully, um, in a few weeks, um, we'll know, know more about all of this. And this is a great question, um, for me anyway. So are you, are you currently satisfied with how the leadership at your work is handling the challenges of this crisis? And, um, Vanessa saying yes, Susan saying yes, Deborah, yes, Rick Eckhart, yes. Um, what do you guys think? Um. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, um, like I mentioned before, we had the layoffs. I'm not quite sure I'm happy with that. Hopefully it's okay for me to say that in front of a crowd, but um, I still feel a little unsteady and, um, you know, and I know others are still kind of looking for guidance, like at my work um, or maybe a lot of them. And, and so I, I'd have to say that for me personally, you know, if I'm being honest, I'd say no, but, um, 
uh, I'm glad to see that you guys have are having a different experience. Um, um, Joe is saying, I'm lucky enough to have a home office spare room. It's great to shut the door on it. I know not everyone can do that at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, and TS is saying, very proud of my executive team. And then Todd's saying, I'm the leadership. So, yep. And um, and Todd is saying, I think we all crave human interaction. interaction. Sadly, work, even in person, doesn't always provide that. Communities like this have been a lifeline for me. I'm glad to hear that, Toddy. Um, Susan's saying, I, I do think it depends on your industry. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. It, I, stuff is happening all over the, you know, like across the board. It's It can be so different. Um, um, Cheryl's saying, my agency is handling it well because we're grant and contract funded. Lots of accountability. So sometimes feels a bit big brother is watching, but I'm happy to be employed. And um, yeah, and Susan's saying leadership teams trying to respond to the economics. Yeah, and and that's, a, you know, that's totally a legitimate thing. Um, Rick is saying, when I take online learning, I become too focused on critiquing the delivery and not so much on learning the content. Okay, yeah, and so um, I, I'm glad to hear that. And, 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 you know, and sort of in a way, producing these community discussions, you know, if there's anything that you guys want more from like what you're getting out of when you participate in TLDC, just let me know. I, you know, I, for me, just as somebody who's trying to, to manage this thing, um, it's a big question mark. And, um, you know, and I have to also just take into consideration just, you know, my own, what, what, where I am personally with, you know, what I do, my day job, and this is my side thing. But, you know, just let me know if you guys need anything else out of this. Um, let's see. So Rick is saying teachers are not always the best students. <laughs> oh, man, we need a t-shirt for that. And Todd saying most important things I think are <laughs> is the leadership one nimble and two willing to respond as the world changes. Agree, Todd. Um, and Susan said, I made a point to join today because I haven't been able to connect in a while. It was important to me to connect. Thanks for keeping it going, Luis. You're absolutely welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, so next question, has technology been more of a help or a hindrance for you in this situation? And you know, I personally, I'm going to, you know, for me, I think that it's been a help. I'm just wondering if getting slammed by all these, you know, new technologies, like for instance, a bunch of different ways of communicating, if it's been kind of, you know, a, a, a challenge. Vanessa is saying, um, technology is the only way to work. There's no other way. Yep. And Susan, so much of a help. Deborah, help for sure. Rick is saying both editing video on a laptop versus dual 30 inch screens is required adjustment. Ooh, man. Yeah. Can you just run back to the office and grab those, those, those screens, bring them home. Docking station issues have been a drag. Working at home is more comfortable. Yeah. Um, Todd's saying without the tech, we would be pretty dead in the water. It's been critical. Yeah. And Toddy, I think we all need to be mindful of how flexible we can be in the workplace. Learning new skills makes you more marketable. Even things like learning teams can give you an advantage. Um, yeah, and we could definitely, we could probably schedule something on that. I'm open pretty much to everything. It's almost like, you know, right now, this whole world of just broadcasting these things is, it, it's, you know, it's almost like somebody had wiped the slate clean and it's a whole new different thing. Um, you know, and I've just been reassessing that all around. Uh, my relationship to watching things like, you know, I've been watching more crowdcasts, believe it or not. Um, and mostly my focus has been on things that are mental health related and um, not so much even productivity, but um, definitely. Let's see. Um, Rick is saying, I love the open format and the social experience here. If you weren't doing a great job, you wouldn't have so many faithful followers. Thanks for what you do. That means a lot to me. It really does. Um, just to hear that, Rick, I really appreciate that. Die Hard, um, if anything, it's highlighted a point I've been making to my team for a while. The basics are the most important thing because when it fails and it will fail, fail, we need to fall back on simple and effective workarounds. For example, screen share lag, open up the presentation on slide XYZ. That is such a significant point there. Um, 
I'm going to read it again. If anything, it's highlighted a point I've been making to my team for a while. The basics are that the most important thing, the basics are the most important thing because when it fails and it will fail, we need to fall back on simple and effective workarounds. And yeah, love that. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that die hard. Um, and Trish, yes, so many great resources are being shared online and so many are free. Yeah. And so, yeah, just having, just, being a part of that mind share for me is, you know, I've been really trying to navigate that and saying, I don't want to take people away from things that are important to them. And so anyway, I have sort of ideas and, you know, the new website is going to be really, really interesting for everybody. It's kind of liberating all the content we've been creating over the last few years. So, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> all right. So next question. Are you currently feeling productive? <laughs> and this is kind of, it's almost a question I'm asking myself on a regular basis. And so I want to ask you guys that. Vanessa is saying yes. Susan is saying yes. Rick is saying yes. But as I commented earlier in spurts, so you guys in chat, how you, are you feeling productive? Um, because, you know, there's just so much distraction, right? Um, and I've, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm feeling productive. I'm feeling working from home. I'm feeling productive in that I'm helping to support my wife and my son, you know, in that way, just knowing that, you know, when they need me, I can be there for them. Um, at work, things are so off kilter that i um, not quite sure whether or not I could say that I'm really feeling productive, but I'd love to hear from you guys um, how you're feeling about that. And it's glad, I'm glad to hear that mostly yes. Um, let's see, Todd is saying, doing coaching and seminars on stress-free productivity is what we do. So feeling well-equipped to deal with the new reality. Oh man, Todd, that is great to hear. Um, stress-free productivity, that is, that is a big thing right now. So um, I'm going to have to uh, reach out to you. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, Todd is saying, I've got I've currently got more work than I can handle, knock on wood, but I've been working from home for a long time. I'm super um, distracted by the news though. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard to, to fight it. It's, you know, like every once in a while I end up kind of, I have, you know, like I might have to go to Twitter, I have to, and boom, there goes that time of my life. Um, uh, Cheryl saying, find myself drawn more to the technical parts of my job things other than L and D because I can lose myself in it hard to get motivated to be creative. Yeah. You know, last week there was this instance where I felt like I was just following what my hands were doing. I wasn't really thinking about anything. I was just letting myself do busy work because I needed to, I just needed to kind of disappear in my head and it was all related to technical stuff. And honestly, those guitars right now are like saving my life because when I need to drop out, I can just stand here and not think by playing guitar. And it's, it's so important for me right now. Um, all right. So let's see here. Die Hard is saying there's a strange frustration. I have three kids and my wife works at home too. So balancing that with work has been stressful, but I can certainly say my idea generation is off the charts lately. I think I'm productive in the time I have free because I know that it's my only chance to get it done. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Oh, and Todd's saying, AKA GTD, getting things done. Um, I'll reach out to you, Todd. Um, awesome. Okay. So I'm seeing it, that, that Joe definitely knows um, uh, uh, on all. Oh, Todd, Joe is saying awesome on all things. Um, GTD highly recommended. Definitely. Um, Okay, let me move on to the uh yeah, we should definitely hear from Todd on some for some tips. And I'm 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 a big fan of GTD, even though I don't really implement like um GTD sort of uh you know practices very often anymore. I you know I I have the oh yeah, there's the book right here by David Allen. Um I need to I need to re review that again. GTD in 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 today's world or in these times is probably that much more important. Um, okay. Here's, here's, here's a fun question. Has a relationship or lack of between your personal life and work life changed? 
And Vanessa saying, yes, I have to do a better job separating work from home. And Rick saying, yes, they have merged. And at the moment, I kind of like it, but I know I need to be more disciplined in separating. How are you guys feeling about that between your work life and your personal life? And that's kind of been the big thing for a lot of my team. Like I work with somebody who he loved being able to come into the office because he just had that separation. He liked the free coffee and, and the snacks. And he just, you know, it just helped him to be able to get out, you know, and um, otherwise he would just be, you know, yeah like what he is now just stuck at home all the time. But um, how are you guys feeling about that? Um, Joe saying work and personal life work has taken over for now. And Susan says, I've been working from home for a while now, at least two days per week. So the separation isn't so difficult for me, but I understand that making the tr transition can be hard. And yeah, it's, it's, for me, I feel like it's it's I, it's still a work in progress. Um, you know, honestly, like my mornings before I check in at the office are pretty much kind of focused on TLDC. And then my late evenings are focused on TLDC after my son goes to bed. I kind of just, that's just kind of been my life for the last few years. And um, I try to keep that separation and, you know, um, but it's become more integrated now. Um, and actually, now that I'm working from home, there are more opportunities for especially my day job and my TLDC stuff to kind of integrate a little bit more. Um, but it's it's definitely uh, combining more in my life. Um, um, Joe is saying, I feel okay for now. People need help and I want to help them, but there comes a time when it has to calm. Yes. Um, and Toddy replying to Susan, when you've done it for a long time, your office and headspace really become your workplace. Um, and Todd's saying, here's a definition of work we use. Um, and, and in quotation marks, he's saying, um, work equals everything in your life that isn't the way you want it to be. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gosh, why do I feel like that's something like something that John Lennon said or something? <laughs> Probably not. Susan says, just keep in mind, if you were in the office, you'd go get a cup of coffee, take a break, walk to speak to someone, et cetera. Don't feel inclined to chain yourself to the laptop. And I totally agree with that, Susan. Um, yeah, that's great. All right. Oh, gosh, time is just flying by. And we still have, I still have six more questions. Okay. Um, are you doing anything now to take care of yourself? Like, what are you doing? Anything? Um, I would love to hear about that because this could help other people in chat as well. Um, Vanessa saying, I'm making more of an effort to exercise during the day. Oh, great, Vanessa. Excellent. Susan, working out when possible, sleeping a bit more since I don't have the commute. Love it. Yes. Oh, Joe, Pilates, exercise routines. Some this is all something I haven't, I don't I haven't been doing. And when I worked in my office, I had this about a mile and a half. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Combined um, this, this beautiful walk through vineyards and through all this stuff right by my office that I used to do every day. And I would get in close to two miles every time you walk back and forth. And I would do that every day. I don't have that at home and we're supposed to kind of be isolating anyway. And so um, it's a little, it's, I haven't been able to figure something out and I really, really need, need to do that. Um, Let's see. Exercise routines. Yes, Toddy. Um, Joe is saying bed early, reading. Yes. Um, Cheryl, using my non-commute time to go for a walk or do a YouTube workout video. Ah, you guys are killing me. I need to do all of that stuff. Todd, exercise. It's the only thing we're allowed to leave the house for. Yes, Rick. He loves the one-minute commute. Um, Die Hard is saying um, home workouts and walking um, for mental space. Oh, for mental space, getting crafty. Uh, started mold making and casting resin. Yeah, it's, this is one of those things that is, I think that, that where it's important, where it's actually changing us, like where you're able to start doing this stuff again, right? Um, I love it. Um, Cheryl saying, sticking to a normal schedule, start to work early and end mid-afternoon. Ah, love hearing all that stuff. Um, let me see. We don't have that much time left, so... I'm going to just jump into it. Well, I'll just keep going. So 
Next question. Do you feel like your organization is innovating to meet the challenges of the current changes that are happening? Um, and, you know, for myself personally, um, I would say that, yes, definitely innovating to meet the challenges. The innovation is like been painful, but it's happening. Vanessa saying yes, as much as possible, given the quick turnaround time, Rick is um, saying we have to survive. We are a fast food franchiser. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, how do you guys feel about your orgs? Are you, is, is there a lot of innovation going on? Um, I mean, there has to be to a certain extent, but um, you know, whether or not it's subtle or if it's extreme, I'd love to hear it. If you guys have any, any comments on that, um, that is one that, you know, I wish I could push a survey out generally to everybody to, to find out um, because you're right. Like Rick is saying, you have to adapt to survive and, um, and, you know, big changes are afoot. So Die Hard is saying, I don't think innovation hasn't arrived just yet. I think we're reacting to the new normal, trying to come up with better ways to do things, but it's coming for sure. Um, Cheryl says, yes, doing well. Have to support all of our early learning classrooms and home visiting programs going virtual. That's great. Um, you know, and just another little tidbit, just watching uh, my son's kindergarten teacher try to figure out Google Classroom and virtual classrooms in general has been really, really fascinating to watch. Just as somebody who has been, you know, in this space for, you know, probably almost 20 years, just seeing how she's managing figuring it out. I've offered help, but she's so busy, you know, and who knows like whether or not I can even really help, but it's, it really is amazing to see how she's adapting and how she's innovating. Um, you know, uh, Toddy saying, I feel like our workflows are constricting the progress we could make in virtual work. Our tools are self-limiting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to just hear this generally, this could be just a, a poll question too, but is your current job secure in this pandemic economy? And Vanessa is saying, um, thankfully for now, yes. Susan says, yes, it's a blessing to be able to work from home. Um, Rick is saying at the moment, yes, in the future, don't know and Deborah at the moment. So there's like, you know, some iffy, there's some yeses and some iffy responses. How are you guys feeling about um, your job security? Um, I'm, I'm on the iffy side. I'm on the iffy side. Um, ideally for me, I would be able to figure out a way that I could make TLDC a thing that could just support people on a daily basis and make a living doing this. I wish I could do that. But, um, you know, my role currently in you know doing production and doing operations um at an online or at a learning company i'm still kind of not quite sure a little iffy just because of the uh the layoffs recently um let's see cheryl saying yes so far secure as long as congress continues funding for head start yeah like uh yeah yeah definitely um, next question. If you are spending more time on a computer by working from home, are you still spending the same recreational time on a screen or a device? And I'm curious about this also for like my, how I'm creating content, right? Because, you know, there has been a huge drop off, not huge. It's a significant drop off in, in the amount of podcasts that people are listening to. I actually haven't seen that much of a drop off personally in ours. In fact, it kind of picked up, but generally um, people aren't listening to as, as many podcasts, I guess, uh, from the publications that I get. Um, but, you know, it's because people, there's just so much media that they're consuming that is focused on the news, I would suspect. Um, Vanessa says in the uh, Q&A area, um, laptop is work, mobile device fun. I spend more time on my phone. Susan, agree with Vanessa, laptop for work, tablet for fun. Um, Rick is saying probably recreate on a PC more than before in the past devices were not part of my recreation. Definitely using my Netflix account. There you go. And you know, there is this whole change in the way that I'm doing stuff. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but now that I'm working and I do like some programming, I do definitely do a lot of HTML stuff and CSS, but, um, I hate to say it, but I found that I can keep my phone and if I'm 
wanting to watch stuff on IGTV or on crowd crowdcast or anything like that, I actually can have it running in the background and it can be helpful. If I need to really, really focus on something, I definitely shut it off, but um, I'm some, sort of surprised how I've shifted in that way of sort of letting media happen or I'm consuming it as kind of a side thing. Um, I don't know if it's good, but that's sort of just a, a thing that's sort of changed for me. Um, uh, let's see. So Joe is saying mine picked up too about remote working and learning. Um, uh, Susan's saying, I just listen to podcasts during a commute, no commute, fewer podcasts. Um, oh, Toddy, musician live freebies are the best. That has been saving me. Um, I have, uh, yesterday I, I watched a performance that I just, of an artist that I love, Jonathan Brooke. And, um, she's just one of my favorites in the world. And she did a live thing on Facebook for a song with silver you know, probably like 20 years old, but I could, couldn't believe that I was actually watching it because it's so absolutely gorgeous. Um, all right. Such a gift. Yes, definitely, Trish. Um, and then I think this will be probably the last one. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Can you guys share this? Is there anything particularly useful that you have found in the last two weeks? And I, I'm talking about useful, like in a variety of ways, useful in, you know, in managing your mental health, useful in helping you do work, um, helpful in keeping yourself organized, um, anything in the last couple of weeks since all of this has happened, you know, um, you know, off the top of my head, I feel like the one thing that has really helped me, if you, if you have a hobby or if you have something that you do that you're passionate about, um, like for me, it's playing music. I'm a songwriter. Um, I have found myself really just needing to get back to that. And like, I think it was Todd or, um, maybe Die Hard who was saying that, you know, getting back to basics. And I feel like that has been really important for me to get back to basics. And so I sit down a lot and I clear my head and it really, it really, really helps me because I, you know, having my wife and son, I just get so anxious sometimes about the state of the world. Um, Let's see, Joe saying, seeing the bigger picture of 50,000 feet view as well as focusing on the detail. Love it, yes. Um, Toddy saying, I've been triaging what I have to do on a notebook every night. Ah, so good. Adding my hobbies as well. Guitar, I'm not good at it, equals peace, yes. And Todd says, this too will pass. Yeah, keep posting those. If you guys have anything else. Now, um, I do have to say, like, I didn't, I didn't used to watch other crowdcast things, but I'm finding some really, really good content on this platform that is worth kind of just going back to every once in a while. And especially, so the Q and a tool that I'm using today, um, you know, I started doing this like, you know, last year where I would just like post as many questions as I could in Q and a and sort of answer them. I'm seeing other people do that on crowdcast as well. And that can be really helpful if you're just trying to get to, you know, to some, to find some solutions for questions, specific questions that you're looking to answer. So um, I do like that, you know, this kind of media um, I've been doing a little bit of meditation and that's helped, um, you know, but I think that for the most part, really like the big things for me is, is kind of not forcing myself to be productive, just taking it easy, um, you know, and just, you know, the rela the 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 direct relationships I have, the people that you know I have around me, my wife and my son, I just put as much focus on them as I possibly can. That's been really helpful for me. And with that, everybody, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you guys so much for coming in. This went a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Um, take care of yourself. You guys hit me up on you know um, TLD chat or send me an email. Um, Thanks, Toddy. I'd love to hear from you. If you guys have any ideas about any other broadcasts, um, here's the thing is, you know, this community, I want to just open up this channel to anybody that wants to do anything, right? If you guys just want to talk about stuff, reach out to people, we'll figure it out. Um, it's, I think that this new world we're sort of moving into, there's just a, you know, there's, there are lots of opportunities to be able to help one another. And if this can be a platform for you to be able to allow that, just, you know, to facilitate, facilitate that, just send me a message. Um, and thanks again, everybody. 
Let's see. Oh, Joe's pitching. She's got a live online learning Q&A on Thursday. Yeah, definitely. And um, that's it. We'll talk to you guys later.